So, to help determine which will uh, reach the 100 meter mark at the earlier time, what we're going to do is we'll, we'll, we'll break it down into two separate problems. So first, let's look at the hair. Now the hair, no, the hair is hard. Let's start with the tortoise. The nice thing about the tortoise is that his acceleration is equal to zero throughout the problem. So this is a constant velocity problem. And what we know is the initial position was at 99 meters. The uh, velocity, the initial velocity, which is all of the different velocities, uh, was equal to 0.05 meters per second. And the acceleration was equal, oh, I already said that, that the acceleration was equal to zero. So we want to know simply at what time does the hair reach the 100 meter mark. So this clearly then, to solve this problem, we're looking for something that relates the final position, which is something that we know, to the initial position and the time, because time is the variable, the unknown that we're trying to solve for. And uh, there is a nice constant acceleration formula that relates positions and time. And let me write it out for you. It's equal to V initial times the time plus one half times the acceleration times the time squared. And this is one of those three uh, magic formulas that I told you that are, are worth memorizing. Now, I like to write it out this way just dumping out that formula because I know that's the right formula and now I want to think about whether or not I'm going to be able to solve this thing. Well, if we look at it, what I uh, like to do is just to circle the unknowns. So the final position, we know that, right? The final position, I didn't write it down, but the final position is when the hair reaches the 100 meter mark. So let me write x final equals 100 meters. So that is not an unknown. The initial position, nope, that's not an unknown. Right, that's at 99 meters. The initial velocity is known to us, so um, I'm not going to circle that. That's not an unknown. The time t, that's an unknown, right? We don't know what the time is. That's what we're trying to solve for. So let me put a circle on that. Continuing along, um, uh, the acceleration is something that we do know. It happens to be zero, so I could completely ignore this term at this point if I chose to. Also, the time, again, is an unknown, but I've already counted to that as an unknown. I've circled it once. So if I look now, I've got one equation, right, and one unknown, the time, so I should be able to solve this thing algebraically. So the rest now is going to be algebra, substituting in for the knowns and uh, solving. Now, when I substitute in for the known acceleration, which is zero, then this term will go away. And then I'm clearly just looking at the constant velocity formula. But we still should go ahead and solve it. Um, I can solve this for t. Notice if I subtract xi from both sides, I'll get xf minus xi equals vit. And since I want to solve for t, remember t is my unknown here, I can get it as t is xf minus xi over vi. And now if I want to get the numbers, I can just substitute in. x final is 100 meters. x initial is 99 meters. The velocity is 0.05 meters per second. I can compute this. 100 minus 99 is 1 meter on top. I have 1 meter divided by 0.05 meters per second. So the meters are going to cancel in terms of the units. The seconds, which are on the bottom, but they're on the bottom on the bottom. So they do a double flip, and they flip back up on top. So I'm going to get an answer with units of seconds, which is exactly what I want for a time. And 0.05, I happen to remember, is 1 20th. So I'm getting 1 divided by 1 20th, so that's going to be 20 seconds. So the time that it's going to take the tortoise to reach the finish line is 20 seconds. So the big question now is, well, at what time is the hair going to reach that uh, finish line? So that's the, uh, what we're going to take up next. Okay, so let's, take a, uh, let's analyze the motion of the hair. So for the hair, it 
In this case, the acceleration wasn't even constant. It was constant in part of the problem, and then it changed to zero in the second part of the problem. So there's a series of parts to the problem. Sometimes to help visualize these things, it's very uh, a good skill to make a little uh, graph to kind of lay out in your own mind uh, what's going on. And usually, I like to graph the uh, velocities first, and then graph the accelerations um, and the positions. So let's take a graph for the, uh, for the velocity of the hair as a function of time. So here's the velocity of the hair as time goes on. I know that he started at t equals 0 initially with zero velocity. Then he's going to take off with constant acceleration, which means that the velocity then is going to be increasing linearly from there. So it increases here, like so linearly, with a slope. And the slope is the acceleration, is 20 meters per second squared is that slope. And he's going to do that until he reaches his uh, top speed of uh, 20 meters per second. And at that special point in time, whatever it is, we'll have to solve for it. After it, he doesn't accelerate anymore, and he's just keeping that 20 meters per second until he gets to the 100 meter mark. Now, corresponding to this, um, and an important skill that they ask you about a lot um, in the unit is to be able to sketch graphs of the other related quantities. So we might want be asked to figure out what is the acceleration of the hair as a function of time, given a graph of its velocity. Now remember that the acceleration is the rate of change of the velocity. It is the slope of the velocity graph. So in this range, until we get to that special point in time, there's a certain slope, which was that 20 meters per second squared that we had talked about. So there's going to be um, a slope here of uh, 20 meters per second squared, right? That's the acceleration. The slope here is always the same. It's a straight line. So acceleration is constant in this interval. Once I cross this point in time, though, the uh, slope of this line is zero, and that means the acceleration then is zero past that point. So it looks like that, just down there at zero. And of course, the other uh, quantity that we're often asked to sketch is the uh, position as a function of time. I didn't quite leave enough room over here, unfortunately, so I'm going to draw a new graph of position down here. And there's still always this special point in time where the uh, rabbit's motion kind of changed from constant acceleration. In the beginning, now, to get his position, remember that the slope of the position is equal to the uh, velocity. So now the initial velocity is zero, so the initial slope of the position should be zero. And as time goes on, the velocity is increasing, so I need a slope that's increasing. So the slope should be increasing, 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 until I get to this point where now the velocity, which is the slope of the position graph, should stay constant. So it should look something like this, a straight line once I get past that special point. And the whole, the whole point, if you will, is that our job is to figure out when the hair reaches the 100 meter mark, because that then will be the final time when we reach the 100 meters. That's going to be the time it takes for the hair to finish the race.